Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good afternoon, everyone. It is Wednesday, June the 16th, 2021. It is currently 4.07 p.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from Victory Baptist Church, located right here in the middle of nowhere, Texas. And I want you to really just... If you, if, you, if you are taking notes, if you can take notes, I would really like you to do this. I want you to literally write down Wednesday, June the 16th, 2021. It is now 4.08 p.m. Central Time. I want you to write down the date and the time, and next to that, just put the present. The present, All right? Because obviously, I give that date and time to give a timestamp so that when anyone ever hears this, they understand that this reflects a moment in time. This is what he was teaching. This is what he was talking about at that moment in time. It puts a a timestamp there so everyone understands its historical context. It describes basically that timestamp says that was a teaching, that was a discussion, that was a commentary on that present time. I really want you to keep that in mind because it's going to come into play, um, I think, in a significant way before we are done. Now, it is Wednesday afternoon. I'm here in the empty sanctuary of Victory Baptist Church, and right here on this table in front of me, I have a copy of The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis. Now, what we're going to be trying to do over uh, at least maybe through the rest of the summer, at least every time I'm here, Every single time that I'm here, doesn't matter if it's evening, doesn't matter if it's morning, doesn't matter if it's afternoon, if I turn on this microphone, I'm going to do everything in my power not to leave this building until I do at least a teaching, one single teaching on the imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis. So this will really expedite our journey through the book. Um, I'm not saying we're going to be able to finish before the summer is over, but that's what I'm really going to try to do. And hopefully, uh, people will be glad about that. I got an email the other day. So someone said, thank you, or, or I'm glad to see that the imitation of Christ is back. So thank you. When, when I, you don't understand, those kinds of words are, are so encouraging. I've said it so many times. When you're sitting here in an empty building, right? And I'm sitting here talking, 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 teaching, 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 teaching. I have no idea what's going on on your side of the microphone. All right, on, on your side, I don't know. You you can be sitting there going, "Whoa, that was great!" All right, uh, what's for supper? I don't hear that. I don't know. So I'm thinking, "Oh, is it is it is it is it working? Is it beneficial? Have I have I lost the plot here? Do I need to stop? Do I need to give up?" So uh, any words like that are so uh, very appreciated. But we uh, this is going to be a serious subject here, right? So um, I almost feel like I need to I need to say, "Hey, you know, t- I need to tell a joke or two because." We're getting ready to get into a very, very serious discussion. If you see the title of this episode, you know we're getting ready to spend some time meditating on death. I know that's probably not, you know what? Uh, I'm looking for a podcast to listen to today. Oh, look, there's a meditation on death, and it's part one. Uh, that sounds like a wonderful thing to commit my time for. Let's 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 use the time of the present to meditate on death. Is do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Okay, okay. But that's what we're going to do. Now, Imitation of Christ, Thomas Kempis. We have reached chapter 23 and book one. Chapter 23 and book one. Now, I have a different translation of the imitation of Christ, but I don't have it near me right now. I sometimes I like to have the other translation, especially when we start a new chapter. But um, so if we we may have to go, we may we may move forward and then go back if I check the other translation and like the way it stated things better, or if it adds a different idea. But I'm going to go with the one that I have here. Again, this is from an old paperback that's literally falling apart. Um, I've stated uh, that I'm going to have to throw this away when I'm done, but one of the members of the church said, hey, when you're done with that, can I have it? And I'm like, yes, you can have this if it's still together. Uh, that it's, I guess it's cool that they want it. But yeah, this book has has uh, been with me uh, since the 1990s, and uh, I, I continue to just, yeah, there's, I could talk all day about this book. But The Imitation of Christ, Thomas Akempis. All right, here we go. Chapter 23, right now. 
I want you to really, really put your thinking caps on. I want you to really give this your full consideration. Now, I know some of you may be listening to this while you're driving. I understand there's only so much attention you can give. Some of you may be listening while you're working. I understand there's only so much attention you can give. I would challenge you to possibly go back and listen to this. If you're listening to me live and you have distractions, maybe find a time where you don't have any distractions and, and think about this. I, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I would challenge you take your phone, maybe a pair of uh, headphones, AirPods, wh- whatever device you can, and maybe go to a cemetery and listen to this in a cemetery. I know that sounds crazy. But this is a meditate. We're going to be talking about a meditation on death. What better way to really meditate on death than standing in a cemetery, a cemetery somewhere, right? Standing there in a graveyard somewhere that that may make it even more real, right? Because we can. Uh, the goal here is to get something from this to, to really have this benefit you. So it may be something you want to consider. Or after you listen to this, just go drive by a cemetery, or you know, and just spend some time walking through it. 30 minutes, 15 minutes, and maybe it will make some of these thoughts very real to you. You can tell me what you decide to do with it, all right? But here we go. Chapter 23, Thomas Akempis, Imitation of Christ, book one. Meditation on death. Here is how he begins this chapter. Very quickly, there will be an end of you here. (laughs) Wow. What a way to begin a chapter. Very quickly, there will be an end of you here. How real is that concept to you? How present is that reality in your present? Do you wake up each morning and say to yourself, very quickly, there will be an end of me here? Is this something maybe you need to write down somewhere? Very quickly, there will be an end of me here. Now, I think to be honest with our, I think if we're honest with ourselves, it's a thought that we we know it's true. Like if I say that, everyone will say, amen, true. But is it really present in your present? Is this idea really present with you? When you woke up today, do you go, okay, very quickly, my time is going to end here. I think if you really believe that, you probably would not do the things you do and probably would make different things would become a priority and you would live. We live, let's just be honest, we live as if we're never going to die. We live as if, I've got a hundred more years. Now we all know that we don't, but we live as if we do. We, re- we, we live as captives to the present. We, we have a very hard time living with the reality that death is fast approaching. We live as captives to the present and all we can see is right here, right now, and we have no thought of death. No, I know we know it's there, but I don't know how much it actually impacts our present. Now, in my translation here, in my edition, he offers some scriptures. So it says, very quickly, there will, end, there will be an end of you here. Then open parentheses, and they offer a number of scriptures. Let's just look at the scriptures that are offered here. We have Job chapter 9, verse 25. Job chapter 9, verse 25. Now, I know I could look these up electronically. I understand that. I know I could already have them written down, but you know I hate to do that. The reason why is all of my teaching is designed to to, to like be, I want you to be a part of the process. So I just think it's when I open a Bible and I turn, maybe it will motivate you to do the same, all right? I just don't want to read them to you. I like to open up the, I like to actually touch my Bible and actually look at the scriptures. I just, I like to do that, all right? Job chapter 9, verse 25. All right, Job chapter 9. Now, whenever we read uh, Job, uh, we have to always know who is speaking. Job chapter 9, verse 1, then Job answered. So Job is speaking here. Now look what he says in Job 9, 25. 
Now my days are swifter than a post. They flee away. They see no good. Job is acknowledging that his life will soon end, the brevity of life, the frailty of life. I think we can see that. Now, we can take that verse apart a little further, but that's okay. He goes on to say in Job 9, verse 26, they are passed away as the swift ships, as the eagle that hasteth to the prey. Now, he finds some some ways to illustrate how fast his life, as a ship that, uh, uh, as a swift ship, Right? You see a ship that's moving fast, and right there, it's there in front of you, and then there you go. It's gone. As an eagle that hasteth to the prey. You see an eagle standing there or sitting on top of a tree, perched on top of a tree or something, and now, boom, it's gone. It's after its prey. That's your life. You see it, and it's gone. It's gone. Um, they, al- uh, they also put here Job 14.1. Job 14.1. So let's look at that. Job 14.1. Job 14.1. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. All of us who are born of a woman, all of us are human beings. Listen, our days are few. They're few. In fact, they're not only are they few, we don't even know how many there's going to be, and we don't know when it's all going to come to an end. They also have here Luke 12, 20. Luke 12, 20. Luke chapter 12, verse 20. Luke 12, 20. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, then who shall the, the, those things be which thou hast provided? Now, if you go and you, you have a rich man here, if you don't know what happens, a rich man, if you go back to verse uh, 17, Luke 12, 17, and he thought within himself, so, um, and he spake a parable unto them saying, this is Luke 12, 16, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself saying, what shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. This person this, this person, this rich person in the parable doesn't even perceive that death is even a threat. Just, just see like, hey, I've got plenty. Let me, let me plan for this, plan for that. I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry. Everything's great. And nope, today, that's it. It's over. It's gone. The end. All of, all of this stuff, all of these things, all of your priorities, all of the things you're working for, it's going to be gone. And then one other passage, Hebrews 9, 27. Hebrews 9, 27, we read these words, Hebrews 9, 27, and it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. You're going to die, and then there's judgment. Now, let's read this all together. Very quickly, there will be an end of you here. Look what will become of you in another world. Today, man is, and tomorrow he appears not. And when he is taken away from sight, he, he also quickly passes out of mind. Now, this is so profound It is so depressing, but it is so true. And this is a principle that has guided my entire life. It really has. Now, maybe to my detriment, maybe it's made me not fit in in situations, but I've always lived with this truth that I'm going to die. and, And when I'm gone, nothing I did matters. It doesn't matter. What oh, so many things that we worry about, so many things that we cling to, so many things that we make a big deal are not going to matter. 
Now, we, we can refer to this in death, but let me just refer to it in a, a number of ways. And again, I've talked about this so many times. When I walked in, now, I didn't really, the thought didn't hit me as much in middle school, junior high, that we called it back then. And, and junior high, it didn't really hit me as much then. But the first day I walked into the front door of Jim Ned High School in Tuscola, Texas, the first day I walked in there, it it just like, I, it was almost like an epiphany. It was like a revelation. I, I basically looked around and was like, do we, do we not understand that everything we do here is ultimately meaningless? It doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm here for one reason, to get a piece of paper. Why? Because I have to have the piece of paper because without that piece of paper, that can uh, cause problems going to college getting a job. I'm here to get a piece of paper. Everything else we do here, it doesn't really matter. When we we walk around thinking, oh, I'm in high school. I'm a freshman. I'm a senior. Ooh, I'm going to leave a legacy. Ooh, we're going to do this. We're going to accomplish this. As soon as you walk out that building, nobody remembers. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, sitting here right now. I am what? two miles, three miles maybe from Jim Ned High School. I could walk into that high school. Well, I'm currently at summer vacation, so no one would be there. But I could wait till school goes back. Nobody cares that I went to school there. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Go away. You don't count. It doesn't matter what you did. Doesn't matter what you accomplished. Doesn't matter if you're a Val Victorian, Salutatorian. Doesn't matter if you're on the football team. Doesn't even matter if, you're, if your football team went to state. Doesn't matter if you broke all kinds of records. Ultimately, no one cares. Nothing you do matters. But we remember how much we walked around high school, certain people thinking that it was so important this and so important that. And, oh, we've got to follow this tradition. We got to do this. And we, why? It doesn't matter. Same principle when I got into the into the military and started working. Every day you're at work and everyone just acts like this is such a big issue. This is such a big issue. And do this and do that and do this and do that and accomplish this and gain this and get this promotion and do this and do this. And I'm like, it all doesn't matter. And I've told the story multiple times, but it's it's relevant here. Very young in my military career, I made it a, a practice. I did this every single time. If there was a retirement ceremony, you know, you know, it, I worked in the medical world. So it'd be like, you know, hey, everyone come down to the conference room at three o'clock for cake and the retirement of Master Sergeant so-and-so or, you know, who, whomever. Right. So and then you know, many cases it was like, you know, you have to go. So you go, you go through the retirement ceremony, blah, blah, blah. He did this. He did this. You know, well, oh, OK, there would be some tears, you know, OK. And then, you know, goodbye. And so then, you know, everybody's eating cake, drinking punches. Everyone's laughing, talking. And he's talking. And then at some point he's gathering his stuff. Maybe he gets a little shadow box that has all of the medals that he won, you know, got in the military. Ooh, you know, OK. Yay, you know, hold, clean. you got to put that in a shadow box so you can cling to those, those things. Okay, and then ultimately it's all said and done. The party's over. What I would always do, if, if, if depending on, you know, knowing about, you know, they're, usually they were with family, so you knew they were probably going to walk out the main entrance. I would immediately go to the second floor, third floor, wherever I could get so I could overlook the main entrance, and I would watch the person walk away, walk out the door. And like, that's the end of their career. It's over. And you see them walking with their family. Sometimes you would almost see them stop and kind of look back. And then they're carrying a box with some of their stuff and it's over. They're done. They're gone. It's gone. And you know what happens? They walk out that door. The next day, nobody cares that that person spent 20 years at working there. Nobody cares that that person won this medal. That Nobody cares. No one remembers. I spent years at the 7th Medical Group here in Dias Air Force Base. I could go there right now and walk in that building. Nobody cares who I was, what I did. Nobody cares that it used to be my office. I am forgotten. I am out of their, I'm out, I'm not in their mind. I'm, I'm out of mind. I am forgotten. I am gone. I am a, I'm not even a distant memory. I'm literally erased and forgotten. It doesn't matter. And we, 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 we cling to the present like it matters so much, but, but we, we don't ever seem to understand, no, we're going to die and then it, we're just going to be forgotten. It's going to be gone. Now, I know that may sound like a depressing thing, but I don't think it's supposed to be depressing and I will explain. I think it's supposed to change our perspective and how we deal with the present. And I think what, what I was going to say William Grinnell taught, uh, <laughs> 
I'm, I'm about to forget the name of the, the author, uh, Thomas Akempis. Yeah, I don't know. Every other author's name was coming to mind right there. Uh, see, even the other authors who wrote great books, they're being forgotten. Okay, Thomas Akempis, what I think he wants everyone to understand is that, look, listen, here's the way you have to live your life. You have to live your life with, a, with never forgetting for one second that you are going to die very soon. And, what, and you need to ask yourself, what is going to become of me in the next world? Today, you're, you are. Today, you are. Tomorrow, you, you are not going to appear anymore. You're going to be gone. And when you're taken away from sight, quick, you, uh, he that also quickly passes out, you will quickly pass out of mind. You're going to be here, then you're gone, and you're quickly going to pass out of mind. You're going to be forgotten. Now, yeah, people can cl- try to cling to this and cling to that, but it is gone. We, 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 we add we almost want to claim, we want some kind of permanence with things. We treat, I, I, I can't even just imagine how many times in the military I would just how people act. And I'm just like, we, we're acting like that. This is the most important thing in all the world. It's our job. Yes, we do our job. Yes, we do the, the, our job to the best of our ability, to the glory of God. But we don't make it more than that. It's, there's nothing permanent about it. It's a temporary job with a temporary purpose. And when you're gone, you're going to be permanently forgotten. Okay. So keep it in its pro- proper perspective. This is about a perspective. Do you have that kind of perspective? Or do you try to make something more than it is? You assign more meaning to it than there is. You are going to be forgotten. I know you don't want to think that way, but you're going to be forgotten. You're going to be forgotten. You're here and you're going to be gone. Now, all right, now we're we're at 21 minutes. Okay, I think I'm going to try one more paragraph here and then I've I've got some thoughts here. All right, here we go. This is what Thomas Akempis says. Oh, dullness and hardness of man's heart, which thinks only upon the present and does not rather care for what is to come. Now, the, the point is, all we care about is the present, and we don't care about what is to come. We don't care about what is to come, listen, from an eternal perspective. I think a lot of people care about what's going to come tomorrow from an earthly perspective. That's why they try to plan for retirement. They plan for this. They want to save money for this. They want to do this. I think a lot of people plan for what's coming tomorrow from an earthly perspective. I don't think we spend a lot of time worrying about what is to come from an eternal perspective. You ought to order yourself in every act and thought as if today were on, you were on the point to die. Thomas Akempis is saying that you need to live every day as if today is going to be it. You're going to die at the end of today. The end of, 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 of Wednesday, June the 16th, 2001, you are going to die. That's the way you need to live your life. If you had a good conscience, you would uh, not greatly fear death. It were better to avoid sins than to flee death. If today you are not prepared, how can you be tomorrow? Tomorrow is uncertain. How do you know if you shall have it, have a tomorrow? How do you even know if you're going to have a tomorrow? Worry about today. Focus on today. In other words, what you should be focused on today is your spiritual standing today. What you should be focused on right now is God, his kingdom, his word. That's what you should be focused on because you don't even know if you're going to be alive tomorrow. But you do know this. If you're not alive tomorrow, you're in eternity. Have you stored up treasures in heaven? How are you spiritually? That's the real question. So let's stop right here and consider some stuff, all right? Oh, there's, there's much here to consider, but I, I want to just throw some things out. In my journal, I wrote down a couple of concepts. You can tell me if you agree with these, if you think these are helpful. Let's consider them. I think some people listening to me right now There are many of you that you're so past focused that you miss eternity. You are so past focused 
You're always thinking about, oh, I remember when I was in high school and I remember this and I remember that. You spend a lot of time in your mind. You may not with your words, but in your mind, you do a lot of thinking about the past. You do a lot of thinking about, oh, I wish I could have done this. I wish I would have, I would have, could have, should have. You're doing a lot of thinking about the past, the past. You almost become a prisoner of the past. Some people, it drives me crazy, especially older people. You get together and all they want to do is talk about the past, the past, the past, the past. Oh, I remember this and I remember this. And, they, and I know that that's a common thing for people to do. But you know what the past is? It's over. <laughs> okay. It's gone. It's no more. You can't go back. You can't relive it. You, you can retell it, but you can't relive it. You, it's over. It's forgotten. I'm, I, don't, I don't understand people clinging on. Now, I, now, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I don't get the idea of clinging on to mementos of the past. Let me give you an example. Everything from my military career is gone. If every medal is in a trash can somewhere, every certificate's in a trash can somewhere. I don't have one thing left from the, I, there may be something somewhere in a box somewhere, but I didn't keep anything. I didn't put a, a shadow box. I didn't, I didn't keep medals. All gone. Trash. Who cares? It doesn't matter. It was, it was the reality of the present, but you know what it is now? It's the past. And you know what the past is? Nothing. It's an illusion of significance. That's all it is. It's gone. Now, I can sit around telling good old boring stories of the glory days to quote, you know, the great philosopher Bruce Springsteen, but that, that, I don't want to be that person. In fact, that song, Glory Days, from the Born in the USA album by Bruce Springsteen, was very profound to me as a teenager when I heard that album. I was like, man, I don't want to be someone sitting around telling, you know, stories, old stories about the glory days. I don't want to. Now, Bruce Springsteen almost states in that song that, you know, I don't want to do this, but probably I will, right? He, he seems resigned that that's the way it has to be. You know, the character in the song seems to be resigned that no matter what happens, no matter how much you fight against it, you're going to get around talking about the stories of the past. Now, I know we all tell stories of the past, but you know what I mean. You can be so focused on the past. That's all you ever want to talk about. All who cares what you did in high school? Who cares what you, it doesn't matter, okay? It's gone. Now, I know that that, that bothers some people, but I think, I, the, here's the thing. If you're always looking back, you're missing eternity. You're not having an eternal perspective. As a Christian, we forget the things that lay behind. We forget the things of the past. Now, sometimes, we spend a lot of time thinking about past failure. Sometimes as parents, you can sit around thinking about all the past mistakes. Don't think about it. If you got something to apologize, apologize in the present for your past mistakes. That's all you can do. Hey, I'm sorry I, I did this as a parent. I'm sorry I failed here, failed there. Once you've, once you've acknowledged it, you've confessed it. If they forgive you, they forgive you. If they don't, they don't. But you got to then, just, you can't just keep living in the past going, I wish I woulda, coulda, shoulda. You can't. You can't do that. Now, I know we all have memories of the past that are just really fond memories. It was a great time. It was wonderful. But you know what? You know what you're doing when you're focusing back and talking about the past? In some ways, you're missing the present. And I can guarantee you, you're missing the eternal perspective. We need to live a life with an eternal perspective, which looks forward, not back. Some people are so focused on the past. Well, if you know you're going to die today, I'm looking forward because death for me is not the end here. It's the, it's the, it's the, well, let me say it this way. Death is the end here, but it's the beginning of something somewhere else. I'm looking to that. But I think we can be, I think there are a lot of people who are just so past focused. How much, just ask yourself, how much time in your daily thinking do you think about the past? Now, the older you get, I think the more the past becomes more dominant in your present. But no, stop looking there. Look to eternity. Look to the future. Look to what you can do today. Right? Now, when you're younger, you don't necessarily look back. But the older you get, the more the past becomes more predominant in your thinking. And I think that's detrimental. Right? We cannot be so focused on the past that we miss eternity. 
And now I, I know there will be some pushback there. Maybe you can you can go you can you can try to argue with me. There's no reason to argue with me. You can have your perspective. I just I just want to challenge you. Just just look. I'm throwing it out there as a, as a challenge. Are you too focused on the past? Are you too focused on the past? Are you? There's times I know I am. There's definitely times I am. I know it. I do everything to fight against it. Like I don't, I don't want, I don't want to try to keep everything from the past. All right. Now, here we go. So we, so we can, so we can be so past focused. We miss eternity. Here's a second issue. We can be so presently preoccupied. We ignore eternity. We can be so presently. So you got some people who are so focused on the past, but we have others who can be so presently preoccupied. We ignore eternity. All we care about is the here and now. We don't, we don't even, we're not even thinking about death. We're not even thinking about eternity. We're not even thinking about the kingdom of God. We're not, no, all we're thinking about is the right here, right now. Living my life right here, right now. No thought of eternity. We are so presently preoccupied. We are preoccupied with the here and now. Eat, drink, and and just be merry. Just, just, fun, food, activity, and we're not thinking about eternity. We're not thinking about uh, people's eternal souls. We're not thinking about the kingdom of God. We are presently preoccupied. And and when we become presently preoccupied, we usually become fleshly minded. We we become worldly minded instead of being spiritually minded. Spiritually minded, you cannot be presently preoccupied because you're looking at things from an eternal perspective. You can be so presently preoccupied that the next thing you know, death has occurred and you had no thoughts of eternity. All right? You can be past focused that you miss eternity. You can be so presently preoccupied you ignore eternity. And then number three, we can be so worried about tomorrow, we lose the peace of eternity. I think there are three dangers here. So past focused, you miss eternity. So presently preoccupied, you ignore eternity. And so worried about tomorrow, earthly tomorrow, that you lose the peace of eternity. You're so worried about tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. What am I going to do here? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What about this? What about that? What's, what's going to happen to this? What's going to happen to this? What am I going to do about my job? What am I going to do about my kid? What am I going to do about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? What about? And you lose the peace of eternity. The one of the Christian things that one of the things about Christianity that should bring you great peace is, you know, that you have an eternity where there's going to be no more pain, no more suffering, no more death and no more sin. That that eternity is guaranteed not because of what you do or can do or or will do. It's because of what Christ did. You have an eternity guaranteed. So let me ask you, are you are you past focused, presently preoccupied? or filled with worry and anxiety about tomorrow from an earthly perspective. Now, I think one of the keys in helping all three of those is a never-ending awareness that you're going to die quickly. It's going to be over. So I don't know why you want to keep looking back when you don't even know how many more minutes you have left in your present. Why do I want to keep looking backwards when the time in my present is quickly running out? I mean, I'm sitting right here looking. I got a clock behind me. I got a clock right here on the laptop and a clock right here on my iPad. It's 4.41 p.m. on June the 16th. I don't know if I will see 6 p.m. I don't, if I'll, I don't even know if I'll see 7 p.m. Look, I've got to get in my car and drive back home. It's very possible. Maybe not probable, but it's very possible that I won't reach my destination and Moonlight Drive in Abilene, Texas. There's a very good possibility that I could die in a car accident. Very good possibility. So why am I driving? I'm sitting there looking back, thinking about the past. I'm wasting the present. Let's focus on the right now. Let's, or, and when I say focus on the right now, let's, let's make the most of what I can right now. And let's keep my eyes towards eternity, pressing towards the mark pressing towards God's glory, eternity, uh, spiritual treasure, treasures and heaven. That's what I need to be focused on, right? So uh, so knowing that I'm going to die, keeping that in mind should not, should force me not to uh, be wasting seconds on looking back or focusing on the past. Number, Number two, 
so presently preoccupied we ignore eternity. Knowing that I'm going to die, knowing that future awaits me should keep me from being so presently preoccupied with this world and preoccupied with the present. It should keep me preoccupied on eternity. It should keep me preoccupied from a spiritual mindset, not a fleshly, earthly mindset, because the fleshly, earthly is all going to pass away. It's all going to burn up. I'm going to leave it all behind. That's all going, it's going to, don't be so, I, knowing that I'm going to die should make sure that I should hold lightly to anything on this earth. Because it's all going to, it's all, it's all going to be taken away from me. You know, country western song, you know, you never see a hearse with a trailer hitch, okay? Yeah, and I, I know it's a country concept, but you don't see, you don't see a hearse pulling a, a, with a trailer hitch. You don't see a hearse pulling a U-Haul. Why? Because you're not taking anything with you to that grave. I mean, I guess you could throw a bunch of things in the grave with you, but it doesn't matter. It's not going anywhere, right? So don't, so don't waste any seconds focusing on the past if you, oh, look, if you realize you could die at any second, I don't think you're going to waste those seconds looking back. I don't. I, maybe you will. I, it, I, it's not going to do you much good at that point in time, right? If you realize that death is could happen any time, then I don't think you'll be presently preoccupied with a world that you know you're going to be leaving, right? Uh, uh, why would you? And then uh, why am I worried about tomorrow when I don't even know if tomorrow is going to be? If I, if I know that I could die at any time, why am I worried about tomorrow? I don't even know if it's going to be here. I don't even know if it's going to show up. And I, you know what should bring me peace is that no matter what happens, no matter what happens yesterday, no matter what happens today, no matter what happens tomorrow, my eternity is secure in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So do not be so past focused that you miss eternity. Do not be so presently preoccupied that you ignore eternity. And do not be so worried about tomorrow that you lose the peace of eternity. That's how I have it in my spiritual journal. You tell me what you think. Now let me pick up uh, Thomas Akempis, The Imitation of Christ. And let me read this all one more time. Here we go. Very quickly, there will be an end of you here. Look what will become of you in another world? Today, man is, and tomorrow he appears not. And when he is taken away from sight, he, is also, he, he also quickly passes out of mind. O oh, dullness and hardness of man's heart, which thinks only upon the present and does not rather care for what is to come. You ought to so order yourself in every act and thought as if today you were on the point to die. If you had a good conscience, you would not greatly fear death. It were better to avoid sins than to flee death. If today you are not prepared, how can you be tomorrow? Tomorrow is uncertain. How do you know if you shall have a tomorrow? We'll stop right there. All right. You can email me your thoughts. I would love to get your thoughts on this meditation on death. What do you think? Is this challenging? Was it helpful? Do you agree with the points that I have in down in my journal? Maybe you agree with my perspective. Maybe you don't. I know my perspective has never been well received by anyone, but I, I know my perspective is very different. Maybe some would say very depressing, but maybe, maybe again, losing your mother when you're young has a profound impact, making sure you understand it. There's no guarantee. My mom never even made it to 40. I mean, there's no guarantee. Go walk through a graveyard. Go walk through a cemetery. See, look at the ages. You have people old, people young. There's no guarantee for any of us. Again, I do not know if I'm going to make it home. I really don't. And even if I make it home, who says I'm going to wake up tomorrow? We need a eternal spiritual perspective. And I think the th one of the great things, one of the great tools in helping us maintain a, a spiritual perspective Eternal perspective is the reality of death. Something to think about. Everyone have a great day. God bless.